The reason we're here is because when you say you're a geographer, people say, oh, you like rocks. Or else they say, oh, you know the 50 state capitals. Which is true, we do. But there's a lot more. So one of the reasons I asked you to be here, Bronwyn, is because I had a student tell me that your class really drew them into the discipline. And what it was, was your focus on food gave them something they knew about, something that was concrete, that they cared about, food justice, food access. And when you started teaching from that perspective, they were able to see how all that stuff interacted. And that's, to my mind, that's what geography is about. It's about the big picture and being able to see how this is connected to that and how this is connected to the other thing and how that leads to a solution. I have a background in nutrition and I came to geography because I felt that nutrition wasn't able to deal with those bigger structural things that are shaping what people are choosing to eat and whether that's sustainable and how that impacts the environment and justice and things like that. So um, I think that that's a really key um, benefit that geography degrees and certificates give to our students. A, a lot of students who come to me really want to have some technical skill that they can point to, that they can say, I can do this, there's a job for me doing this thing. GIS is that. And obviously there's, there's jobs and jobs for someone who wants to be doing GIS. But it's a lot more than that, mm -hmm. right? One of the great things about geography is how inner and transdisciplinary it is. And so um, GIS and the other tools that we use for geospatial analysis can be applied to just about any field and are. GIS is essentially learning about cartography, so map making, about visual analytics, um, about quantitative analysis. I have students um, from my GIS and advanced spatial analysis classes going on to do all sorts of different things in software engineering, um, federal and local and regional policy, um, urban planning, medicine and health. It can really be applied to so many different problems and I have found that although many other fields try to do geospatial analysis, uh, geographers, because they're trained so holistically in geography and methods, um, are really better equipped to do it than most other people. One of the things I found, and I did some consulting when I first graduated with a geography degree, and I felt like I had superpowers. I could do GIS, and a map is worth a thousand words. And whether it's in a civil engineering firm, in a planning firm, government agency. It's one thing to be able to make the map, show the table, but to be able to sort of frame the question so you know what map to make, that's really why I believe in the skills we're giving our students, not just technical skills that they can you know, use to get their first job, but something that they can use year after year after year to grow into the person they want to be. Obviously, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention our colleagues who are doing physical geography, which is often uh, sort of not something people outside of geography are fully aware of, but there are geographers doing serious top-end climate modeling, uh, global environmental change, uh, glaciers, contrails, clouds, wind, all of these big physical processes. It's one of the places where a lot of our undergrads are actually getting to do real field work. I know Alan Taylor has taken his students out to the Sierras in California. I know there have been field schools in South Africa and I believe now starting to be in Wisconsin, in the, in the forest, working with an indigenous uh, group in that state, but then also up in Alaska as well. This is starting to be uh, an area where students are really getting boots on the ground and out in the field doing uh, hands-on work with communities in these areas. And Erica Smithwick has involved undergraduate students in her work with policymakers doing prescribed burning in Pennsylvania and New Jersey to decrease the risk of really severe fires in these states. One of the things I really wanted to introduce is the idea of these certificates that we've created covering a whole range of geographic topics. And the idea here is for people who don't want to commit to the major or for people within the major who want to demonstrate uh, a focused competency in a certain area. And these certificates, uh, my students tend to take the landscape certificate, which is about the big systems, unpacking the economy and population and things like that. My students often take the Environment Society certificate, which really gives them a very interdisciplinary perspective on how humans interact with the environment and how we are, depend on the environment. Our professors in our department cover things like energy justice and 
uh, water policy and conservation policy. There are three different certificates that um, would be really relevant for any of the courses I teach and students who might be wanting to take those courses. And uh, that would include the geospatial and big data analytics certificate, um, which really gives uh, students a good grasp of data science within a geographic and sort of broader societal context. Uh, there's also the GIS certificate, which enhances students' skills in GIS, which is a very highly um, coveted skill in many fields these days. And then there's the justice, ethics, and diversity an inequality certificate, the JEDI certificate. Um, I teach a lot about environmental racism and how federal policy going back to Jim Crow and before has really had a determinative relationship with um, people's health outcomes today. So all of those things would be relevant um, for somebody for, who wants to study health geography or um, urban planning. You know, students come to my classes with major interests in finance or in uh, business and things like that. And what they get from me is unpacking how those systems work so that they're not just thinking about supply and, the, supply and demand and the numbers and those sorts of things, but who's, who are those numbers for? How are those systems built? How are they working? How are they creating inequality? And I think that's, that's ultimately uh, something that's useful not just for geography majors, but for people who are majoring in anything that touches on politics, economy, society environment, which is essentially everybody.